It is often said that World War I began when the Crown Prince of Austria, Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated by gunfire in Sarajevo in the Balkan Peninsula on June 28, 1914. This event is often referred to as the spark that ignited the war, but it is important to note that there were many other factors that contributed to the outbreak of World War I. The assassination of Franz Ferdinand was merely one catalyst for World War I. The real problem was the accumulation of tensions and rivalries between the major European powers over many years. These tensions and rivalries were caused by a number of factors, including imperialism, nationalism, and militarism. With the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, humans were able to use machines and production efficiency increased dramatically. The Industrial Revolution began in England and spread from Europe, and with it, Europe achieved the growth that had no rival in the rest of the world. Constraints on land and population limited the growth of the Industrial Revolution. Once all the land and people had been used, efficiency could no longer increase. This limit led to a period of stagnation known as the Victorian Era. As a result, colonies were developed to overcome land and population constraints. European powers established colonies in Africa, Asia, and the Americas in order to gain access to new resources, markets, and sources of labor. Of course, acquiring a colony not only increased land and population, but also had other benefits. Colonialism meant that cheap labor could be supplied and surplus products could be sold. Assuming that if it costed $100 to produce a product in the mainland and it costed less than $50 in the colony, producing it in the colony was much more profitable. The Industrial Revolution also led to an explosion in production, leading to overproduction of products. People on the mainland had already bought everything, but there was still a lot of inventory piled up in warehouses. So selling these overstocked goods to the colony at a low price could take care of the hazard of inventory. Therefore, the more colonies there were, the more profits were maximized, and the country could grow bigger based on the capital power that came from these profits. The British Empire, nicknamed the country where the sun never sets, founded many colonies around the world based on its strong naval power. As colonies were established around the world, even if the sun set somewhere, it would rise somewhere else. And at any given time, the sun would be up in at least one of Britain's colonies. So Britain came to be called the country where the sun never sets. Many European countries, led by Britain and France, established colonies around the world and went beyond ordinary countries to become empires. If you are not satisfied even though you have numerous colonies and enough cheap labor, land, and resources, another way is to rob others. Some experts believe that World War I was caused by excessive human greed. If only certain countries had fought each other, it would not have been a world war, but rather a war between countries on a small scale. However, as a country grew into an empire, colonies from all over the world were mobilized 
in many countries with the intertwined interests joined the war as allies. So the scale of the war escalated into a world war. The reason Germany started the war was because it was a bit behind other empires, such as Britain and France, and wanted to catch up with them. One more reason to add to this is that Germany had particularly strong nationalism, which solidified the belief that only its own people should live well together. Of course, such nationalism was prevalent in Europe at the time. Germany is a Germanic country, and they went to the surrounding Germanic countries and preached nationalism, persuading them to work together to achieve great things. For example, Germany went to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, located right next to Germany, and encouraged nationalism. However, as Germany gradually strengthened its power with countries with ethnic Germans, some countries that became anxious were France to the east, Russia to the west, and England across the sea. So, as these three countries joined hands and formed an alliance to keep Germany in check, Germany could not just sit back and watch, so it formed an alliance with Austria, Hungary, and Italy. The alliances gradually developed, and later Japan and the United States were added to the negotiating powers, and the Ottomans were added to Germany's allies, expanding its power. However, the country that was impatient was Germany, so they attacked France and Russia while excluding Britain, which was located across the sea. However, in order to fight on both sides simultaneously, their military power had to be divided in two, which was naturally a disadvantage to Germany. In order to overcome this unfavorable situation, the strategy was to quickly attack from one side and immediately hit the other side. This operation used the perfect strategy of deploying a large number of troops on one side to quickly obtain results and then moving on to the other side, but it was not effective. Although these operations were difficult and risky, Germany carried them out. First, about 90% of the troops were sent to France to quickly occupy it, but the problem was that they were unable to occupy the country due to strong resistance. Meanwhile, Russia invaded Germany from the other side, and Germany had no choice but to divide the front in two. However, Germany's strength did not weaken, so they were not defeated quickly, and they carried out the battle well. So, the war dragged on for over four years through trench warfare making it the worst war in history, with 39 million casualties on both sides. However, as time passed, Britain joined the forces and the United States decisively entered the war, turning the tide of the war completely in favor of Britain, France, and Russia. At the time, the British Navy was the strongest in the world, so it was difficult for Germany to penetrate the sea, but Germany produced submarines called U-boats to attack British ships. So, German U-boats attacked British battleships, but at this time, Germany mistakenly attacked a ship with Americans on board causing great damage to the United States, and the United States suddenly entered the war. But in reality, this attack was just a justification, and from the beginning, the United States was particularly close to Britain and was providing supplies behind the scenes. However, when an American ship was attacked, the United States took advantage of this incident 
and enter the war, resulting in the Allies winning. Germany acknowledged defeat and signed the treaty with the victors, which became the Treaty of Versailles. There are important contents in the treaty, but the most important thing to summarize is that World War I was caused by Germany. So Germany, as the defeated country, had to take responsibility and pay huge compensation. Of course, disarmament was included in the treaty, but the problem was that the compensation was set excessively high. If the amount of reparations had been at a level that Germany could repay with hard work, it would have been repaid optimistically, but many experts were concerned that it was set too high to a point where it could not be repaid in the first place. So, one of the reasons Germany started World War II was the excessive amount of war reparations in the Treaty of Versailles. In addition to war reparations, another reason was the Great Depression and German nationalism and imperialism in Britain and France were also important factors that led to the outbreak of World War II. Imperialist countries continued to be greedy, and Germany also became greedy for nationalist territorial expansion of the German people with the advent of Hitler. Most of the Western powers suffered greatly due to the Great Depression. In the meantime, Hitler appeared, and he believed in the superiority of the Germanic people. Hitler thought that it was wrong to hold Germany solely responsible for World War I, that it was not the fault of Germany alone. Therefore, Hitler proclaimed the slogan, Make Germany Great Again, and called for Germany to be reborn as a powerful nation. Hitler gave a speech explaining his ideas to a small political party, which was persuasive to the German people and became extremely popular. He shortened the name of his political party from National Socialist German Workers' Party to Nazi and rose to become the president of Germany with overwhelming support from the people. Hitler's desire for the glory and revival of the Germanic people was a major factor in his decision to start World War II. He believed that the Germans were a superior race and that they deserved to rule Europe. He also believed that Germany needed to expand its territory in order to survive and thrive. These ideologies also become human tragedies caused by excessive human greed. Thank you for watching the video World War I provided by History and Current Events. Gina, Bella, Cindy, Helena, and Tony have contributed so far as narrators. Thank you.